I do artistic things with technical tools, so my brain is definitely more on the artistic side of it. Even a mediocre mic, if it's mounted correctly, I can work with it. It pays to have options and many tools at your disposal to get these jobs done. Hi, I'm Kim Kyland. I'm here with Chris Howland, a sound mixer in Los Angeles, California, and we are going to look at his gear and find out what's in his box. And this is the first time I've been interviewed by a sound mixer while they're actually sound mixing. Yep. That's pretty cool. <laughs> As a sound mixer, uh, I love being able to have different setups and because uh, it reminds me of when I played drums, I could uh, organize my setups according to the gig, according to the job. So some jobs require uh, more extensive setups with more capabilities, like this one, and other jobs are simpler, like that one. So, you know, they're both really great setups and they help me get the job done. Uh, so the sound rigs are a lot the same way. I have, a, a, I have three systems. Uh, the bigger one is getting worked on right now. It's a, a Midas console, a 970 and a 270 uh, sound devices. Uh, also a boom recorder and it uh, has a computer on the cart. It has its own power and everything. The remaining two rigs, uh, since I bounce around a lot between ENG documentary work and then I still do a lot of episodic TV and feature films, the last couple of years for me have been exclusively day playing. Uh, occasional commercials, uh, substituting or doing B unit days on episodics and and feature films. Uh, it, it pays to have options uh, and and many tools at, at your disposal to get these jobs done. Absolutely, and I'd love to start talking about your your smallest your jazz kit over here. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> it's funny. This is a. This is my bag rig, and it's a very straight ahead uh, six three three. Uh, along with uh, I have five four elevens in here. I also have the uh, uh, the PSC antenna distribution. And, uh, and then a Sound Guy Solution um, battery distro. And uh, I, I'm using these, uh, the updated uh, smart batteries, which have been really cool from the MP1s that we used to use. These are a great, um, a really great uh, improvement to Quite the Quite a weight workflow. difference, yeah. A weight difference, they're more powerful, and these are made by Inspired Energy, that was the original company, and there's different companies now that have purchased them and they rebrand them for, for those companies, which is great. Uh, make them easy to find. Um, I stuck with the 411s in this bag because I typically don't wear it that much anymore. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in the last year I've worn it twice and that was for walk and talks on SWAT TV show. So that's fine and I have, I have three different harnesses. I do have the K-Tech harness, the full one. Uh, the one I use most commonly is the VersaFlex which mm -hmm. uh, has the straps on the bottom which are really helpful when I'm doing walk and talks, that kind of stuff. Um, and if I'm doing like documentary coverage where I'm getting in and out of a van, uh, I have the, just the, the very simplest X style porta brace harness so that I can put it on and, and I, can, I can actually pick it up, get out of the car, in the car. Um, so I don't really wear the bag that much anymore. So I stuck with the 411s because I love their extended range. They have a tracking front end. So, and I've, I purchased both the SRAs and the SRBs and they're great, they're lighter, but th they didn't have quite the range as the 411s. So, Totally. Stuck with 411s. Awesome. I'd love to talk about this little arm you have here, this magic. Is this... Oh, yeah. Who makes this one? This is a, this is a magic arm by Manfrotto. Okay, that's what I thought. And uh, this is actually a, a cell phone holder off a selfie stick. So the idea is that um, when I'm using Wingman or something else, I can have that. I can have the phone mounted and, you know, the power is here. So I can have it plugged in. It runs off the, ba the BDS system. And uh, yeah, it's just a great way to work. It's very compact. Mm -hmm. Love the extended range and, and being able to uh, remote an antenna quickly is key for um, process trailer work when I'm in the cab. You know, this is, it's very easy to, to remote from the ComTech an antenna, three antennas basically. Uh, the two receiving antennas for the, for the electros and the transmitting antenna for the ComTech and I'm good to go. That's awesome. So yeah. this, this setup sounds like it's really versatile. It's worked for you in a lot of different situations. Yeah, absolutely. I can do sit down interviews with it. I can take it anywhere. So yeah, so that's what's in the bag. Uh, when it comes to uh, running gun jobs, horizontal space on any set is going to be a premium. So it's good to bring your own horizontal space so you can have dibs on it. <laughs> so uh, I, I found this uh, stool at Ikea. Actually, there, there was a place where I was shooting that had a stool like this and I grabbed it I put my stuff on it and I was like, you know what, I love this, I'm going to buy a stool. So I went and found this, I think it was an Ikea stool, maybe it was Target, I don't remember really. 
but uh, it was uh, just a really great place. It fits the bag perfectly. I loved it that it doesn't take up any more room than the bag does. And I can leave it standing there and it's, it's perfectly reasonable because like I said, it doesn't take any more room than the bag already takes. And so I used this for a while. It was, it was a lot of fun. I put this little handle on it so I could just carry it. And uh, it works really nicely. Had my name on it so nobody <laughs> took it. Yeah. Uh, so then we used that for a long time. And then I wanted to kind of upgrade it. I wanted it to do a little more. So I bought another one and put casters on it. Just kn knocked those things in there and a couple of boom pole holders. And so this was kind of the second generation of it. And it worked really well. It's very non-threatening in a home type environment. People don't you know, think, oh, this won't make any mess. It's clean. Absolutely. Again, it also takes very little space. Right, not only. like a cart. This is just, I mean, this is super slim, especially being right next to you. It's like, takes yeah. up barely no space. Yeah, and nobody can really complain about it. And yep. it lets me, you know, while the interview setup's getting set up, then I can just leave this where I want to be, and, and, it's, and it's good to go. So this worked for a long time, and then I finally found this guy. This was an Ikea cart <laughs> that, uh, was uh, modified by Gene Martin at Audio, at Audio Department. Department. Yeah. And so once I figured out this cart could fit my bag in the same way, uh, this that. became the go-to cart. And I had, it had small casters, which weren't really good, like like the ones on yep, the previous so it's stool. Got some nice rubber wheels here. Yeah, so Gene put the, the, the quarter 20 around it, put the wheels on it. And uh, so the whole idea is that I can get, you know, to and from the car in one trip with everything. Very important. The, the stand, <laughs> as you can see, mounts here. Uh, and I love having the wheels on the stand. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, And then, you know, a couple of boom poles. And the good thing is that I can keep my follow cart, I can keep this in the back of the car and grab whatever I need. If I need a time code slate, sink boxes, I can throw that in there. If I need a couple of labs, throw that in there. And then I can grab my my lav mountings and my lav mics, I can throw that in there, it fits perfectly, so. Right, so this this then can just stay in the car and this is all that comes with you. Right, That's right, amazing. so I still have, you know, this this stays in the car and, and I can, if I need to come back and get stuff, I can, yeah. but, uh, but rolling into an office or a house with just this is very non-threatening. Absolutely. This might be a little much, but. Right. But if I roll in with just this, again, it takes very, it takes just the same amount of room as the bag does. Absolutely. And uh, the cool thing is that I can undo this. And there you go. And instead of using a traditional C stand, I really like using the stand with wheels because it allows me to do a little cheating on the day if I got my mic on a subject that they're leaner. I can just reach over and, you know, barely move it. But, but this way I can, uh, you know, get set up. Nah. I do like this uh, this mount because it does hold on to this pole oh, pretty well. Oh, it's very tight. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very nice and snug. This is the loon, eight foot loon, which I have. What do I have? I have three loons, an eight, eight footer and, and two 18 footers. These are, I wanna say it's Matthews. It's been so long since I bought it. Let's or see. no, it's an Avenger stand. Oh, cool. So it's av readily available at Marker Tech. Okay. I know there's two different heights. I think one goes to 10 and the other one goes to like six or seven. But uh, this is the slightly taller one. So, you know, I like it because the, the wheels allow the maneuverability of it. And uh, it's also, it gives you more weight on the bottom. So for just a short reach like this, I don't have to have a, a sandbag, yeah, a sandbag, per se. Oh. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I can. And you've got a, a Sound Guy Solution. Yeah, the quick uh, release. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Sound Guy Solution quick release, and this is an MKH fifty uh, with the uh, Sanella mount. Wonderful. Uh, Philippe Chenevez from uh, Sanella in Paris makes yeah, those. Yeah, I love these. Amazing. So. Uh, yeah, my two kind of go-to mics are the 50 and the uh, Sankin CS3E. This is the follow cart. It yeah. pretty much goes with me I anywhere I go. Right, so no um, matter if you if you're a, have a bag set up or a cart set up, this mm -hmm. always comes. Yeah, this is almost, okay. this is almost always there, um, which is, I, I've, I've been reluctant to update this because, uh, and this is still, uh, was my first follow cart. When, wow. I, when I first started as an ENG mixer, yeah. and all I had was a bag, I still had this 
a version of this cart with these type of drawers. And I've been reluctant to change it because it fits in my vehicle mm. perfectly, uh, which is a Honda Element. And, that was uh, my next question. Do you have a huge production van? I don't. <laughs> and honestly, in working, my last two years have been B units and day playing. So it really helps to have the flexibility to move my own gear. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and there's, you know, there's some shows where they'll come and pick up your gear at your house, which is great. And that's how big shows work. Mm. But as a day player, I have to have that flexibility to just show up Absolutely. anywhere on the day. And as long as Transpo can give me a parking accommodation near the set, then I'm, then I'm good. That's awesome. So, but this, uh, being able to take this with me on either bag rig jobs or cart jobs helps for me to not forget things. Yep. Because it's, I know it's packed here and I can grab what I need on the day. I can roll it in with either this rig or that rig. And I just don't forget things, which is great. Yeah, that's super helpful. You can't I'm rely on me to remember. <laughs> me either, <laughs> don't worry. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Your mind is elsewhere on the important stuff. Yeah, so this, um, I had uh, Jonathan Lelouz, uh design this drawer yeah. for me, and uh, it's got you know backup, uh, backup mics. It's Very the cool. Sankin CS3E with the uh, the cement or with the it says the cement mount, but it's the uh, uh, it's also for the Sankin, but from Sanilla, which are uh, really great mounts. They're really the only mounts I like to use. I yeah. do have some KTEC mounts that are awesome that I've used for years. Um, those are my fallbacks, uh, and I use them in certain situations. This one's kind of a fun mic. Um, oh, what is that? AKG C451EB, oh. which is an EQ revision. This, this was actually- This is an interesting head here. Yeah, for the longest time, this was my hi-hat mic. Really? On the drum set. <laughs> so yeah, it would be, normally it would be mounted, you know, here-ish. Yeah. And you know. So it can handle a lot. It can. Yeah. High SPLs, I can use it for car sounds. I can use it, you know, interior car. It's easy to mount and- and very easy to position, I see from that swivel yeah, head. Yeah, the head is really. That is very cool. Really can we can we take the wind protection off? Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. So CK1 capsule. It's uh yeah, it, it works really nicely. I love it, and I've had it. Like I said, I've had it probably 20 years now. Are there more things that you brought in from your your music life to your sound mixer life? Like I know Mark Ulano was your mentor for a long time, and mm -hmm. he's also a great musician. So yeah. I, I don't know if that's maybe some influence that you picked up from him. It was, uh, yeah, it was. We were definitely for the first few days we were two drummers talking about music, talking about that's stuff. Great. So, yeah, but when it came time to learn the filmmaking process, I mean, he most of the education I got from him was not necessarily on the engineering side; it was on the filmmaker side. Uh, one of the things he told me was, as a musician, when you talk about guitar players, you're going to talk about, you're going to have reference points. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, you know, my favorite, Eric Johnson out of Austin, yeah. great guitar player. Um, he says, when you're describing tones and the creative direction you want to go, those are the, those are the influences that you're going to mention. He said, filmmakers have those same references. Mm -hmm. Fellini, Truffaut, all these different, you know, uh, all these different movies that filmmakers refer to that influenced filmmakers. And... You need he he his big thing was I needed to know those same reference points, mm -hmm. and uh, so that was a, a lot of the the education I got from him was about set hierarchy communication how the information flows, yeah. but also from the creative side, you know you have to be on board with your director you have to know the story they're trying to tell, and you're going to bring your contribution to help make that happen, but you have to know where they're going. Absolutely. You have to know what their motivation is. Yeah, because in the end, it's all about storytelling. You know, right. you could have the best gear in the world, we all know, and True. it just, it, it. Hammer and nails. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, so let's go back over to this drawer here. For sure. Um, so yeah, so that's this, you know, uh, a couple of replacement batteries. Great. And then uh, we have some charging stations. Some that's built in, Velcroed down? This is Velcroed down and that's built awesome. in. That's um, awesome. What's funny is that when I'm day playing, I typically am not using these. Um, because I, in the day playing mode, I have maybe four or five different utilities yeah. that come into work. And I used to be really anal about how things were set up and maintained in here, especially when I was just doing ENG work by myself. Yeah. But as I started working with more and more utilities on day playing jobs, which are shorter in duration, you know, there would be a time where I would kind of go in after another utility after the job ended and, and put everything back. Yeah. And, then, and you're like, <laughs> but then I realized, why am I doing this? Yeah, the yeah. next utility <laughs> is just going to come in. And, and I always, I always tell them, this is your cart now. You organize it the way you want. Yeah. If there's something specific you need, let me know. I'll get it for you. But for the most part, I let them, I let, I let them set it up to, to where it's comfortable for them. Absolutely. And uh, so now it's whatever state it's in today is, uh, you know, my last show, <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe it was L Word. I forgot what it was, but uh, this, is how, this is how it was left. 
Um, awesome. But um, but yeah, these uh, all these labels were put on by Eva Risman Farouche when she was uh, my utility on a movie called Valley Girl. It was an MGM feature. It was a musical yeah. retelling of the 1980s movie with Nicolas Cage. Yep. So we'll hopefully see a release soon. I uh, hope so. <laughs> yeah, she came in and uh, uh, she came in and labeled everything. That's she even beautiful. labeled the label maker. So she, <laughs> yeah, so, my kind of gal. I know it, right? <laughs> so this drawer is the transmitter drawer, and uh, yeah, could we pull this out and bring yeah. it to the top? That would be wonderful. Let's yeah, see. this is you know this was just my kind of crude way of of uh, keeping all these organized. I think in here right now I have eight transmitters and uh, I have three of these uh, plug-on transmitters. A couple of the HMs so and one of the HMAs. And the HMA is up there on that pole. And do you run all electrosonics? Yeah, electrosonics cool. for wires. So what, what models do you have in your transmitters? I'm curious to know what, what types have, you have. These are the SM, SMWB in A1, uh, single battery version. Um, so, and then uh, my older ones are just the regular SM, SMVs mm. and SMQVs. So I like the, I, I want to hang on to these because even though they're not the wideband, they still have 250 milliwatt capability, which yep. these don't. Mm. They only go to 100, which for whatever rhyme or reason they did that, yeah. they did that. But these also are, are wideband and they have the ability to record. If I don't want to transmit, I can record on these as well. Mm. I didn't know Electrosonics, you could do that. I thought that was exclusive to Zaxcom. It, they can't, um, it is exclusive to Zaxcom. They can't transmit and record at the same time. That's that's what it is, okay. So it has the card in there. Okay. I can set this up to record, but I'd have to put another transmitter on mm. them to transmit. All right, cool. You know, narrative coverage in Los Angeles, you know, the, yeah, the Electro Gear is very robust. It's very easy to reliable. use. Reliable. Yeah. yeah, has a very, uh, totally. uh, the learning curve is very easy. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is good because I really needed to Focus, especially in LA, focus on uh, frequencies and RF. Absolutely. And coordinating. Yeah. And RF coordination especially is. Especially in LA. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to be your Achilles heel. So let's see, what else do we have oh, here? We, we got trans, we got batteries for days. You know, we batteries. Got <laughs> yeah, I use, when I'm day playing, I tend yeah. to use uh, lithium batteries mm -hmm. in the transmitters. If I'm on a series or a longer running show, then I'll use the, uh, the rechargeables. Especially if, it depends on the rapport with talent too. If we can right. get into a nice groove where they don't mind battery changes, that kind yep. of stuff, then we'll, we'll use the rechargeable yeah. stuff. But you do sometimes get the, the talent who's like, you know, once it's in their costume, they don't want you in and out yeah. of there. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I, we'll, I understand. We'll have these there. Yeah. These are, are great for many hours. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just, it's respecting their space. It's having yep. options and being able to give them the options. Totally. Um, but yeah, so various clips. Beautiful, more electro stuff. These are, uh, what do we got oh, in here? This is all like, I will occasionally run into stuff where I'm doing round table discussions uh -huh. or, you know, mics that are seen. So these, for all my Sankins, right, I have all the yeah. tie clips in one place. Right up front. So we got little caps the, there. The wing caps, mm -hmm. yeah, wing capsules. Uh, that's an RM11. There we go, yeah. Just little stuff like that. But awesome. it helps to have it in the same place. This one is another important one. The uh, These, uh, mm, yeah, those are so easy to lose, I know. tiny little screws here. Yeah, so <laughs> I have a... You know, you can go to... Oh, it's so good to have replacements for those yeah. on hand. Little ones. Th this is actually the... Uh, these are still in here from my ENG days. You recognize those? I think. What this would you the, use those for? The rings on the G4. Oh, Remember the, yeah, where you yeah, put on yeah. the plug-on transmitter? This is the ring that holds the, the receiver. <laughs> you always have these handy. Yep. You know, to tighten these on. Oh, and then it looks like you have more screws down there. Are those nails? What are those? That. Who knows? Uh, rubber bands, because somebody liked them. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Oh, I, <laughs> beats me. Uh, oh, we got maybe th these are maybe this was an Eva thing. I don't remember who. Oh, safety pins. Okay, safety pins. so two colors of safety pins. Whatever. You never know when you're going to need a safety pin or a rubber band. You know, I <laughs> I trust that they were used certainly somehow by somebody. There's there's also just you know transport, transport tape, tape everywhere. Just I love everywhere. it. It's yeah, just, you know, you stuff. never know. Yeah, uh, what else is there? antennas here? down there. Oh yeah, there's re replaceable, you know, yeah. I have an more antennas, like three or four more down there, just because I like to leave them attached and I shut yep. the drawer and it's and usually they're, okay, they're but I yeah. like to have extras. Absolutely. Just, just in case, but you know, uh, tweaker, this is a Comtech tweaker. Mm -hmm. There's a, you know, the electro, uh, the electro clip. Um, this is for the electro clip. Yep. 
and also the electro clip. Awesome. So your setup, I mean, yeah. everywhere we've turned, I feel like it, there, it's simplicity. You're not super precious about where everything goes and how it goes. No. And I, I, you know, I like keeping these batteries here because these batteries go with these right. transmitters. So I only wanted to open up one drawer to do yeah. it. Um, some people like to keep all their batteries together. It's yeah. fine. Um, but, but yeah, this is the transmitter drawer, and, and you know, more often than not, if I'm if I'm uh, if I have to park in a, a, a dodgy neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really easy to just pop this drawer out yes. and take it, take it with me. Very important, this especially is in LA. At fifteen hundred dollars a mm -hmm. transmitter times eight. Yeah, you're not going to. These are that. all eleven $1 hundred a piece. There's three of them, so yeah. you're talking about many tens of thousands of dollars sitting in this one. Absolutely. In this one thing, so yeah, so dodgy neighborhood, I can just take this with me, yeah, and and then put it right back in. So this one is Labs. Uh, basically, Sankin COS 11s, a few Countryman B6s, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So those are, you know, these are the labs and the most commonly used mounting apparatuses that I have in here. Uh, we even have one of these shorties. Which I would love to. This was a. This is an, oh. a, 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 this is a <laughs> Sennheiser mic. Yeah. We ended up cutting it short because I was working on a show that had a lot of puppeteers. Oh. And we had to slate in really weird places. So I would put electro transmitter on the slate, tape this to the side of the, oh, of the slate, and I could record the slate clap from across the room and keep my, my stuff on the floor. I love that, yeah. So it, you know, <laughs> it's a, very, a, a mic that I didn't use much anymore, so I was like, cut it. Yeah, so, so let's let's actually have two of those floating. Come around. on in closer. Let's look at some of these bits and bobs here. So we have more. Let's see. Do you mind if I just get in here? Yeah, these are uh, those are the clips for the B sixes. Wonderful. And then we have some. Is this uh, Bubble yeah. Bee? We have the, these are. What the heck is that? Oh yeah, this is a uh, this is actually yeah it's it's a it's a cover. I don't know if it's Bubble Bee. I don't remember who the brand is. But, it's uh, nice and soft. It's a cover. I can use them on just various plant mics, yeah. that kind of stuff. Beautiful. Which works. Um, there was a, a, a some car coverage where I had a white interior, mm. so this really helped. Beautiful. You know. Um, and we have some um, uh, hush heels. Hush heels. And then we have some. What are these caps? Are these? Yeah, these are the caps for the Countryman. That's right. And then the uh, windscreens for the Countryman. Wonderful. So keep those separate. Yep. So, like I said, all of this is in the state of the last show. Um, and let's see, you have know. some labels here. Yeah, there are some labels. Some of these are outdated. I can't remember if I did these or Eva did these. But uh, but this is, you know, red. It's a red band sanking. Yep. So red band meaning it's lower sensitivity, which is great when you have screaming comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it's, you know, black. You know, red band right. uh, with, with a black cable. And that was something I talked about with um, Agamemnon. You, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, he's wonderful, but you know, mm -hmm. he he gave us an example. Like, you can't ask Robin Williams to just not do his thing and no. scream and be Robin Williams and be hilarious. So it's right. it's definitely important to have the different sensitivities nicely sure. labeled. You can just grab them and go. Right, it's grab very them and clear, go and which is wonderful. And uh, I do I do have other mics in other places. Um, you know, I, I have actually two of these. There's a smaller one that has maybe four in yeah. it that it's a quick grab thing. You know, I'm al I always say we do, uh, I, I do artistic things with technical tools, but so my brain is definitely more on the artistic side of yeah. it. Uh, I could really, I, honestly, I could, as long as the mic sounds good and it's flattering to the voice, yeah. I don't care the brand. Um, you know, so for me, it's kind of more about economics and yeah. and just getting getting, uh, you know, even a mediocre mic if it's mounted correctly. Yeah. I, that that I can I can get something with it. Yeah. I can I can work with it. I pulled off some pretty good miracles with yeah. two Sennheiser G2s with their ME2 mics that came mm -hmm. with them. Yep. Uh, you know, for feature films, shot yeah. on film, you know, with me working by myself or me working with a boom op, that was you know that yeah. I, I I did just fine with those. And I didn't hear a single complaint from dialogue editors. Yeah. They could, or filmmakers, they could tell their stories, and they didn't need to. They didn't need to know that it wasn't a Sankin or that it wasn't a. Yeah. You know, it was fine. Yeah. Because right. uh, it really, it's it's more about the approach. It's more about how you integrate with the process right. as understanding a whole. Understanding sound and understanding placement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a. Uh, it's 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 everything is depth and degree. Mm -hmm. Not too much of this. Not too much of that. In in you know you want to stay. The, the in the end you want to stay emotionally connected to your yes. character. So, uh, so yeah, there's there's that. This is primarily mics. This one is uh, more Ooh. mounting gear. It's more mounting, mounting gear. gear. Let's dig into this. So yeah, they have this. I don't even know what this is. Who makes this? It's 
Oh, that's Hide a Mic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I love those. I have a couple of those myself. Yeah. They can be really perfect. I'm, I'm touching my own mic right now. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Um, but the, this little, uh, the, the breast area, right? Sternum. That little, thank you. Did it, sternum. sternum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're great for that area. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so I, you know, uh, a lot of times when I'm, when I'm gearing up for a show, the utility that I'm working with, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, are there any specific things you want me to buy? And they'll give me a list and I'll make sure that we have it. So awesome. a lot of the stuff, I hate to say, I don't necessarily use it firsthand, but yeah. my utilities do. Definitely. Um, so it looks like here you have uh, hide a mic stuff. You mm -hmm. have more hide a mic back here. These yep. little tie and bra clips. I yep. love these as well. Yep. What else? Do they, does uh, Sankin make these? Uh, no, these are made by a company called Abtec. Abtec. And these Cute. are really great. This I've never used these. This one's for the, yeah, for the Sankin. That's uh, beautiful. You can you put the Sankin in there. It's this big rubber mount. I like to use it on suit jackets. Mm -hmm. It uh, it really it's helps for space. suit jackets. There was uh, there's a TV show called SWAT that I do a lot of B units on. They had one uh, character that always wore a blazer, and so we would just mount this on the blazer. They had a pouch in the back of the jacket. Uh, We'd so have it all ready to go. She could just put it yeah, on and a subject who maybe doesn't want to be mic'd can be mic'd really well in a right. situation like that. Right. That's wonderful. Right, we could wonderful. just mic the jacket and then yeah. they would take it to her and we'd listen to it and so that, you know, do the roll call as we're yeah. spooling up to shoot a take and it would sound fine. And that must so. have required some back and forth between you and the, the costume department for right. sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was uh, th that's the thing about doing B units on shows mm. like that. There's usually a, an established protocol or workflow right. that we have to figure that out. Right, and which is different to have, you know from show to show and, yeah. and set to set. Yeah, every show is yeah. a little different. The, some some wardrobe departments are more uh, engaged uh, than others, mm -hmm. so we just have to feel that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the standard yeah. RM11s. Yep. We even have the uh, see those good old Sankin RM11. Uh, <laughs> and then these. These cool, these oh, cool little like things. Your neighbor's sawing something. Right. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, these are great. These uh, who makes these? Oh yeah, Bubble Bee. Bubble Bee. Yeah, make we got some Bubble Bee stickies for this exact model. Right. Yeah, Bubble Bee's great. And I have, I have a couple of black ones as well. I don't know where they are. Great. And you have the I'm little, sure the little fur patches here. <laughs> these are just yeah. yeah. <laughs> these seem like they're, they're uh, all clinging to each other. Oh yeah, this one's like an RM11 with the uh, with the fur already oh, attached yeah. to it. Oh yeah. So some of them I see you leave like s set up in a right. way. <laughs> Somebody does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And what else? Oh, that we one have LMC is this one. Yeah. We have some of the Ursa sticky, and I see you have a mm -hmm. couple of the Ursa mini mounts here. Yeah. Let's see. I like these a lot. So. Oh, the, yeah. Those are great. I dig those for for sit down interviews and yeah. that kind of stuff too. That's that, and I always have the clothes me on here. Because <laughs> Good, because yeah, I, that being knocked over I've would have hurt. I've had have gone through that before. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just the amount of money you see just sprawled yeah. across the floor is I feel you. pretty frightening. But no, but th these, both of these have little Velcro pieces yep. on them, so they fit right there and they don't move. What uh, else? What's yeah. next? Headphones. So, you know, headphones. This is all just headphones. There's some uh, some Hush Heels stuff in here. Great. Pretty good measure. Yeah. But most so of these. We have a lot of halter technical, I halter see. Halter technical. Yeah. yeah, it was really great. Uh, there's uh, a few that I just found online. Mm -hmm. I think these were like three or four dollar jobs. Yeah, so you're which, always prepared for it. How many Comtex do you have? Uh, 17? Oh. Wow. I want to say I usually have 15 and then I have two that are yeah. private for the crew. Right, okay. So that's typically around what I have. So you, we yeah. had a little more Hush Heel stuff here. Yeah. What's behind that there? Hush Heels, this is uh, just Rycoat stuff. I think oh, this is cool. probably where they stored that. Oh right. yeah, and there's a, a lab snake. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, cool. yeah. more. Super yeah. stick. Super stick, <laughs> always. You know, I I if we're geographically spread out, yeah. the boom operator, utility, and myself, then I'll have them wear a lav mm -hmm. and that I'll we'll just use to communicate back and yeah. forth. Yeah. So this has a talkback feature on it. No, these no. are just regular labs. Oh, they, they just are. Okay. have them on. These are just uh, oh, uh, instead less of expensive. talking into the boom mic and things right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are less expensive, uh, you know, Sennheiser right. mics that were re-terminated to to Electro. Great. And uh, yeah. Is the MKE? It is a version of it, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. It's funny because it has the built-in windscreen. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's perfect. Yeah, I do have the uh, the push-to-talk mics as well. You do. Um, I'm not really a big fan of using them. Yeah. For one thing, it pops a little bit mm -hmm. when you hit it. Yeah. Which is it's one not thing. very nice to hear. But the other thing too is that, you know, when it comes to um, dealing with the set and, and solving problems, sometimes I'll I'll send a utility to ask for something, and. It's nice for me to hear the tone of that conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I just want to make sure that the utility is not getting too much pushback. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and for me to just be able to, to listen to that or check yeah. in on that conversation helps yes. because then instead of the, the spending that time for the utility to come back to me and, relay and then it. try to relay it yeah. and, re and characterize how the exchange happened. Right, you're just there. Yes, I, awesome. I, can, I, can, I can hear it, I can react, and then we, we either change our plan or we move accordingly. Right. And, um, and then we just, it helps, it helps me keep track of the tone of the set. Mm. The comms, this is, a, this is a light that <laughs> usually Wonderful. is for, for the setup. Uh, these are uh, Comtecs. I have a few of my Comtecs actually loaned out to friends right now. Great. Uh, but there's a couple extras in here, like these little mag mount antennas. Mm. I've which never used that, that's allow great. Me, yeah, they allow me to plug a transmitter and maybe put it in the visor of a car. Yeah. And then that antenna I can put onto here and mag mount this to the top of the car. Oh, that's really cool. It just gets the, the antenna yeah, outside of the car. Yeah, a little bit orange, yep. Yeah, so these are great to have for that. Yeah, what else is in here? This is, ah. What's that? Hand warmers. Oh, important sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah, oh, and then this, this cool little thing. Huh. <laughs> it's uh has a mount. You can actually uh, shove this into like a, like a window sill, oh. something like that. It really helps, See, and then you can put the mic on this it. This is what I'm talking about, the inventiveness of sound mixers. Yeah. What about time code? What do you have for time code here? Time code, uh, I have, uh, usually I have three of these Deniki TSCs. Mm -hmm. I love how they just fit in here perfectly. Yeah, they, it's so, great. Uh, I usually have three in here. I actually have one loaned out to a friend of mine yeah. right now. But uh, Bad Hair, that's a movie I did pick up on. Hmm. Uh, the L Word. Great. <laughs> the unit on the L Word. Uh, so yeah. Oh, these and you have the JB1s as well, too. Yes. Yeah. I have a, the JB1s I really love. I love these, too. That's two. what I'm using right now. So yeah. I have, let's see, five of them. Yeah, five JB1s. I keep them in these pouches just to keep them from getting yep. messed up. But they're really... I love Deniki. Really awesome to have. They're tiny, and they have the display, which yep. is great. And uh, let's see. Straps. What do you have for straps? Yeah, straps. I actually keep... I try to keep a few of these new in the package. Uh-huh. Because every now and then you'll get talent that does not want something that's been used on somebody I else. I understand, yeah. So, you know, this one's actually looking a little worse for the wear, but I do like to... <laughs> but it's still packaged. That's yeah. the most important part, yeah. If I'm, if I'm starting a new show, I'll, I'll make this part of the Expendables, mm. and I'll buy, you know, I'll buy, you know, half a dozen or so, yeah. re refresh on all of this, and then, uh, but then I'll also, I'll leave a few in the package so people know that yeah. this is yours. Opening and it in front of them. And then I'll put the name on Absolutely. it, and they know... Yeah. And I love the color coding on Ursa. That's yes. a big thing for me, especially if you're grabbing something really quickly. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah, Neopax waste. Yep. And you, you know, there's, uh, yeah, Ursa. All the Ursas are here. Yeah, the tool drawer. Oh, important. You know, outdoor softies. Yep, yep. Uh, this is another, another Omni Goose. <laughs> Oh. Which, it, you know, should have been in the other drawer. This is a 48 volt Phantom Power. So uh, every now and then I'll have to put a 250 milliwatt transmitter on the Buma. Mm -hmm. So I can Velcro that here, uh, plug this into them, and what? then plug their boom into that. Why would you have to do that? What situation would call for that? Longer range. Because mm. uh, the plug-on transmitters are only 100. Yep. And so there's been, uh, not very many, but a handful of situations where I need, you know, I need a higher power transmitter yeah. on them. Cool. So I've used, that, I've used this for that, because, um, you know, you can grab one of these, you know, uh, here it is. This, I mean, I've right, Velcroed we'll that to there. It on. It's actually a rig that Kelly would wear a lot because yeah. she liked she liked having this on her belt, mm. and uh, she always had the cable running. She liked she didn't like having the transmitter on the pole for the longest time. So, but uh, but yeah, so this is a good long range rig. Plus, um, you know, I, I think she it was great because she could unplug her boom, plug in a plant mic, and then leave it wherever oh. with the cable, and just mount the plant mic and leave this somewhere off to the side. Yeah. So now you have a you know, 250 milliwatt capable plant yeah. mic. Oh, what is this? <laughs> the K-Tech Tadpole, which- uh, This is adorable. It's a nice thing to, yeah? a couple of different uses. I mean, you can shove this in the seat of a car and it's a plant mic. That's true. And you can, uh, bathroom stall setups, places where you're cramped, yeah. closets, you know, uh, you, the long stick is not gonna help you. I so, gotta get a tadpole. But just a, a, a nice surgical <laughs> grab. <laughs> exactly. And there it is. Battery tester. Uh, you know, there was that yeah. stuff. More Joe's sticky stuff. Yes. I've seen like four cans of this so far. In your Around. Yeah. yeah. You can never have enough. No, it's And then true. basic, basic tools. So you always have iPhone charging cables oh, to yeah. loan to people. Always. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it's, that's the thing I usually say at the production meeting when you go around the table and yeah. introduce yourself. It's like, 
I'm so and so, I'm the gaffer, I'm so and so, I'm the DP, and I go, my name's Chris, I record, I recharge iPhones while recording sound. <laughs> Don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, it usually gets a laugh. So, I know my place in the world. <laughs> the one XLR cable. One loan, just in case. Just in case, you, you never know. know. Yeah. I agree, I have one of those in my kit at all times as well. <laughs> yeah, so in the, the boom pole holders, a cup holder for your coffee, and I have this little mass here in case I need to put a, an antenna on it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Or mount, I can mount a light from it, I can do anything. So, yeah. This has been a really, really good, uh, good card to have. It's a rock and roller, it's a modified yeah. rock and roller. Um, that has you know new wheels put on it yep. and uh, these halo braces to accommodate the bigger wheels but um, yeah it's it's been a workhorse and what I call the mini rig this is the uh, this is the the narrative cart that I've been using for a lot of my uh, day playing uh, being at work uh, anything that requires quick adaptability to small spaces um, this is a cart that uh, this actually used to be my bag rig uh, I had many 411s with a 688 in a bag, and then I realized, you know what, I'm never going to carry this around, and I had the 633 in that bag rig already going, it was great. Yeah, that's a so lot of weight. I can, yeah, so this actually, this rig uh, came about in two uh, phases. The first phase was actually this top section, which we called the tabletop rig. It's something that Gene Martin, uh, uh, I, we just talked about it and drew a little diagram, and he custom fabricated this whole piece. And in fact, I'll, I can pull it out. The whole thing started out just like this. Oh, wow. So I could walk into a house, put it down, and I have 12 faders, uh, nine channels of, of, of receiving, and uh, two channels of transmitting. Uh, and everything is there. It's powered off of these batteries. And then I also have uh, the PSC triple play. So I actually have two of these batteries engaged in the triple play. The third input is used for AC. Yeah. So I can plug it into the wall and it'll run on AC power, or yeah. I can run it off batteries indefinitely. These, yeah. these are the same batteries I use on the bag rig. Yep. So that's awesome. Adaptability, exchangeability. So three of those, how long would that get you without having to swap? Depending on how many mm. uh, channels I'm using. Yep. What about uh, full speed? In monitors, uh, three four hours. That's not bad. And then I can, and that's well, that's with two. Yeah. And then these are honestly just riding in here right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have this uh, field venue run off of uh, this battery. Yeah. This is actually a custom. Uh, that, I was just going to say that's quite cool. Yeah, this is uh, Gene did that as well. He, these these uh, this is the Electrosonics field venue. It mm -hmm. came stock with an uh, NP1 adapter mm. here, so you could put an NP1 in. It would power the whole unit. Gene actually, uh, you know, installed basically installed one of these in there. Did a custom cut on the side and. You know, my beautiful labeling changed the label. So <laughs> it's beautiful. But it's, yeah, it works really nicely. Um, uh, so it, this al allows me to manage the power. If I'm not using these three receivers, I can turn them off. Um, but it's nice to be able to have this many channels and be able to mix on faders as a yeah. mixer. That is the key to this rig is uh, for narrative mixing. I want to have my hands on faders and I want to be watching a monitor. Yep. So. That's, uh, that's what this rig was designed to do. But the fact that it comes off and can be a tabletop unit is, yeah. is so amazing. The, it's like another level of portability to this. Right. I was, I was doing um, a string of commercials for a French eyewear company called Affalou. We were shooting in these uh, Malibu beachside mansions that didn't allow any carts to mm. come in. So you'd see the front door and this very ornate entrance and yep. camera carts lined up. So I was able to just pick this up and walk right in and set it down on a table and and I could remote my antenna to where I needed to remote it to and I had full portability and was able to roll quickly. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's how this works and uh, I did want a place to put it down on permanently so we, Gene and I ended up calling this the pedestal and uh, and I wanted these extra 5 8 pins here so that I could, when I'm sitting at it for an extended amount of time, I can mount, I can have my laptop, I can have my, my monitors. Uh, if I'm doing a two camera shoot. So yeah, these these are really great, robust little HD monitors. Yeah. I can tilt them and uh, you know have picture. Like I said, I've, uh, Gene made this bracket to hold both of these and then I have another single as well. Um, oddly enough, well, and these are, these are just half rack space with like, you know, digital media, um, 
you know, uh, charging cables. I have my highlighters for the scripts. Um, lots of little doodads here. My uh, my ultimate ears. <laughs> oh, nice. So. Oh, it's even got your logo on it. Look yeah, at that. Right. So beautiful. It's actually the group's logo, not mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's always been. My logo is actually the uh, my signature. Your signature. I do love that. Look at that right little plate on the, on the side. Yeah, that's always been my logo. And this has always been the LA Sound Mixers thing. So Gene was nice enough to make these up and surprise me with them on the rig, which is kind of cool. But yeah, and then this is just space to carry extra monitors. This is a, a, a nice brick light with uh, daylight and tungsten. <laughs> and uh, this arm actually will usually mount to here and the light mounts to here and the light comes out right over here and just gives me a nice little glow on the front of the unit because it's all dark and when it gets dark it's hard to see. Um, but yeah, so that's it and your, your phone holder. And uh, usually I can mount the, uh, the walkie right here with the antenna coming straight up and then I have the, the walkie talk back here. I like to run the walkie through the system uh, so, that, uh, so that when we need to, uh, the crew, we can all monitor it. Mm. We kind of know when first team is walking. Yep. We know how long lighting mode is. And we know yep. as things are spooling up to the take, we can yeah. just monitor it That's and awesome. be ready. So I have a, you know, I have 11 and 12 dedicated as playback. And uh, these can all move around at any given time. But for the most part, 11 and 12 will be my playback. And uh, 10 will be the walkie. And then uh, 8 and 9 will be, you know, boom up and utility. And, uh, and then one through seven are for the coverage. And if I need to dip into the uh, eight, you know, receivers eight and nine for coverage, I can do that at any time. So it's nice for a, a really compact solution. I mean, the cart at its widest point without the monitors is 19 and a half inches, which is just barely bigger than a rack space. Mm -hmm. So that's from wheel to wheel. Yeah, and I remember you told me a, a story about this cart. You were able to fit inside of a coat closet recently for <laughs> yeah. like, a, there was a 360 shot the camera was doing. Yeah, and it just shows how small this cart is. Yeah, we were at the El Rey Theater uh, on Wilshire. Yeah. And it was a Jay Pharoah movie called 20 Minutes of Fame, I think. And they were doing a 360 Steadicam shot in the main club room with a fight going on. And, and there was playback. And I needed somewhere where I could see the cues and see where I am, but close enough for the RF coverage, but far enough and out of sight. But there was, yeah, tiny little coat closet that was, I mean, it was small. They couldn't fit anything in there. Nothing could fit in there except me. <laughs> so I fit in there and I was able to have the monitors up. I was able to have this out and this is the, the chair that I normally use for it. So it's a nice camping chair. Oh, it's a rocking it chair a too. Rocker. Look the, at that. It's a freestyle rocker. Oof which is great. Chairs are very important when it comes to mixing sound. So, Because <laughs> this size, honestly, has been really easy. I've carried this thing up flights of stairs because uh, it just, I mean, it's so light. It takes, I can pull these drawers out and- Lightens you know, the load even more. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've had- And this you know, guy comes off to do it separately. This is Yeah, wonderful. and the nice big wheels. I mean, I, we've walked it upstairs and it's not hard at all. Yeah. So it, it uh, works really nicely. The, the risers come off so that I can load it into the into the Honda. That's awesome. So it's nice to be able to move all of this on my own. Yeah. And more often than not, it helps me with a, a speedy wrap out as well. And we all like that. Yes. <laughs> yep. What do you think? Should we should we uh, load it into the car? These are uh, eight foot telescoping ramps. This this car has been really good for my rigs, uh, moving stuff, and this is primarily one of the reasons. There's a, I think a 39 inch clearance in the back of this vehicle. So when I bought my follow cart, it was a regular rock and roller. First thing I did was I sized it down to about 38 and a half inches so it would fit. Uh, I could just roll it on without having to break it down, which really works well. So this whole cart will fit right here put the wheels in. And the beautiful thing is that I can use this apple box as a spacer. So now it's solid. It doesn't move. Bag ready to go right right there. And 
these I kind of put on the side. Do kind of a yin and yang thing here. And then, last thing is the, the chair here. So it's all there. Done. So everything fits and it's a quick load in and out. Hi, this is your host, Kim Kyland. I'm a production sound mixer and the US brand ambassador for Ursa Straps. Thank you so much for watching as we delved further into Chris Howland's sound kit. A huge thank you to Chris for being so generous with his time and sharing his knowledge with us. This video was brought to you by Ursa Straps and Bird Murmur. Remember to like and subscribe so you can get notifications as we release new videos every week.